From the northwest coast of Ireland, the name of Londonderry was carried across the Atlantic by Scots Irish pioneers who settled in New Hampshire, Vermont, Nova Scotia, and Maine. The story begins in the walled city of Londonderry, Northern Ireland, on its historic ramparts, where during the 1689 siege of the city, a boy called James McGregor is said to have fired the cannon, which signified that the blockade was broken and starvation of the city ended. Nearly 30 years later, it was the Reverend James McGregor that led the first Presbyterian migrants on a 3,000 mile sea journey to America, following the ban upriver from Coleraine and then out to the Atlantic. Many of those on board had fought in the siege. Landing in Boston, they would then travel onwards to New Hampshire, where they took the territory of Nutfield, building new settlements and chartering a large town they named Londonderry, and later another town, Derry. We're here at the grave of the founder of Derry, the Reverend James McGregor. Uh, buried here too is his wife, uh, Mary Ann Cargill. Right next to James is the grave of his son, uh, the Reverend David McGregor. One thing that uh, we hope comes about during the 300th observation of the founding of our town is that more attention will be paid to uh, Mary Ann and the efforts of all of the women who came with the first settlers. These women's weaving skills were clearly in the DNA of the settlers as they built a national reputation for their product. So it's probably no surprise that back in Londonderry, Northern Ireland, a mirror image was built over the centuries with the women of the city excelling in the quality manufacture of linen worldwide. The Ulster Scots brought with them the knowledge of taking the flax and making it into linen products. And they were known for the finest quality linen in this area. Um, many important people such as George Washington and Thomas Jefferson were said to wear Londonderry linen shirts. It was almost a part of their DNA. And so when they went to America, they took those skills with them. Naturally, the landscape wasn't that different. And soon Londonderry, New Hampshire was as prized for linen as linen was here. So much so, it was the first trademarked product in America. And Washington and Jefferson were delighted to wear clothing of Londonderry linen. They boasted about it almost. So it was a very fine product. Londonderry, Northern Ireland is many times bigger than its smaller relative in New Hampshire. But in the adopted home of James McGregor from Achadui, Northern Ireland, there's an enthusiasm for the heritage, history and familial links that were the result of that migration 300 years ago. A lot of people who live right here know the name of the town is Derry, or they know the name of the town is Londonderry. They have that aha moment, even if they've lived here 30 years. Ah, there's, that's why it's called Londonderry, because of Northern Ireland. We're sitting in the 1774 old meeting house in Sandown, New Hampshire. We're about uh, five or six miles from Reverend McGregor's church meeting house in East Derry, but we've gone back way in time. The interior of this meeting house is basically unaltered from when it was built 1774, only five years after the meeting house at First Parish was built. And it may have been the same craftsmen involved in both of them, they were not that far apart. And you can really see the kind of life that they led since the meeting house would have been fundamental to their whole life cycle. That life cycle began here, on the River Ban in County Londonderry 300 years ago, as the sailing ships packed with passengers headed out to sea towards their New World destinations. The skills they brought with them from their homeland in Northern Ireland would leave an indelible mark on life in the United States for centuries to come. <laughs> 